Someone asked me about cable sizing in the comments, which I reply to, and you use a cable size calculator online, it's pretty good. Um, and you basically uh, add up the current draw of all the devices in your circuit, um, and then you punch that in, and put in the length of the cable, the total length to the then device, and it'll spit out, you know, what size uh, cable to use. No, that's that's fine. Um, the next thing is fuses, and this confuses a lot of people. <laughs> the um, uh, how to size a fuse, and it's fairly it's fairly straightforward. Um, that the the fuse has to be the weakest link, so your cable will burn. If you overload the cable, it will burn, it will melt, and it'll create a fire. And this is what you're trying to avoid. Um, or your device at the end short circuits or malfunctions and so you want the you want the fuse to be uh, the weakest link in that circuit so if we uh, take a circuit for example as your positive as your negative we'll ignore the negatives just now and you want to uh, put a light in your circuit you'd maybe put a, a little uh, you'd maybe put a little switch in and um, that returns to negative. So say your cable was rated at, or say your current draw was, uh, say for example, we'll make it easy, five amps, we'll make it larger. Um, and your cable's sized for five, but it, you'd probably size it for, you know, a little bit more. Um, and then your fuse, you wanna put a fuse in here. You would fuse your fuse at, say, Five amps. So that's what's going to draw, or maybe six or seven. You would you would add a little bit when you turn a circuit on. There's a little spike in the voltage. Um, so that's all straightforward. What uh, where, where people can come unstuck, um, and this is serious stuff because you know there's been a few things in the use of camper vans going on fire, and you can guarantee most of the time it is actually electrics that's caused it. Um, so you might have uh, you, you might have some devices in here like some. Uh, uh, USB charger points. They can take a fair old current draw, uh, and so you would have that going there, that going to there, and that may be a 10 amp circuit. So you put a, a 10 amp fuse in there. Other cables may be sized for 10 or 15 or something like that. If you're incidentally, if you if you are putting a couple of these in series which I wouldn't recommend, no, not that, uh, sorry, parallel. <laughs> Cut to the next bit of paper, I was waffling a bit of shit there. Um, where people can come unstuck is, is if they have, say you've got something like a, a USB charger, for example, and the, the thing's rated at, say, 10 amps, for example, so... You would create your circuit like that. You might put a little switch in, like before, and you would put a little 10 amp fuse in there. Your cable would be sized for, you know, 10 amps uh, with a little margin. Um, and uh, say then you want to say, all oh, right, fuck, I want to put a, uh, this This is an easy place to break into the here. I want to put a, a little LED light. We'll, we'll choose something that's got a low current draw. So, right, okay, uh, we will tap off, because these cables run to the switch, we'll tap off, we'll put another little switch in, keep it all nice and neat, all our switches together. Um, we'll put in our little light, LED light, one amp, which would be quite high for an LED lamp, and then connect that back to the neutral, you know, at that convenient point, you know, this might be a wee fuse panel, or a wee panel in your van that you can get into. So you think, right, one amp, we well, can't get an 11 amp fuse, it'll probably be all right, yeah, that's fine. If the fuse pops, if I've got both these running, fair enough, I'll replace the fuse. Where the danger is, is if you're not using this, you've got nothing plugged in there, it's not operating close to the 10 amps. And this thing here, the, uh, the, this lamp here malfunctions or there's a short in the cable, and you wouldn't use the same size of cable for this as you would for this, you would size your cable, you know, for that load. So you've got a really, really thin cable here, only capable of carrying a couple of amps. But this is short-circuited, and all the current is flowing through there, and it's going to keep going through until it pops this fuse. By that time, this could be on fire. 
Uh, the, the cable itself probably, well, the insulation does burn if you buy cheap cable, but what happens invariably is it sets fire to things all around it. Um, sort of uh, lo lots of wood and material and camper vans and things like that. So we'll carpet up the walls and just carry on. So, um, and so it's actually this circuit which creates the fire, the small one. It's not the biggie. You think the biggie, that's the, that's the, that's the dangerous one. It's the small one that's going to get you. The other thing as well is if you, here's another scenario. Uh, you want to put in a few USB chargers. Uh, and it's, it's the same thing. In fact, let's just use this drawing. Let's change this to a USB charger. And that's 10 amps now. So we put in a 20 amp fuse. What happens if you're only using one of these at the same time? One of these at a time and it malfunctions somewhere. You've got another 10 amps at least before this fuse bursts, by which time, again, your cable's gone on fire or your device at the end, you know, is, is heated up and set fire to something next to it. So just be very careful of that. <laughs> so uh, how you'd approach something like that is you've got your, um, your supply, your battery, and you, th this, this, this is why you've got fuse boxes. Uh, so you take your live into the fuse box, uh, neutral to a, a connection bar. Sometimes they're integrated into the fuse box. And then from there, you can take off individual circuits with their own fuses. And so in the previous scenarios, we had a couple of USB chargers and a lamp. And so what you do, if you want to put a switch in, that's fine. To call these cables to switch panel. Never, ever, ever take one cable from your supply, split it among switches, and then take it off to your load. Don't fucking do that, okay? We've got USB. One. USB two. And light. And again, individual earths. Now, sizing your earth cable, going back to cable sizing, your earth cable needs to be able to take the current. Although people think, oh, yeah, well, you know, the, the, the current flows from the positive, gets used up by your device, by your load, and then it's just nothing going back to there. It's the same current, this side of your device is that side. So if that's one amp, you measure it there, measure it there, it's all the same. Um, it's, it's, it's the voltage that drops. Uh, so yeah, so that's uh, that would be a 10 amp fuse. That would be a 10 amp fuse. And that would be the one amp fuse. I know it's a bollock, but you're not arguing with me. You're arguing with the laws of physics. Um, and this is the way to do it. You know, you, you, you don't do things like this. You try and uh, save on um, wiring, fuses, switches, um, time. It takes a huge amount of time to do all this sort of stuff. You know, I know. <laughs> Cables everywhere. Uh, three fuse boxes in this van. Um, but if you don't do it, you're going to have a fire. You know, uh, end, of, end of story, you know. Uh, and uh, you know, this this is, I think, a, a few of the problems nowadays is, you know, it's confusing. There's no, you know, step, you know, step by step how to, you know, uh, do your exact van because everybody's van is different. But lots of resources online. Just spend a little bit of time looking at it. Any questions, chuck them in the comments below. Cheers.